I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a regular board meeting. So, uh, Lexington County School District 3 Board of Trustees. It's Tuesday, December the 14th, 2021, and we're at the Baseburg Leesville Middle School. Uh, we'll start off by having our Pledge of Allegiance and our prayer. Next is approval of our agenda. Uh, fellow board members, you have the agenda in front of you and, and without objection, we will approve it as submitted. Hearing no objections, agenda is approved. We also have the approval of the minutes from the November 9th, 2021 regular board meeting. You've had a chance to look at those as well and without any objections, we will approve those as well. No objections, uh, those meeting minutes are approved. Next we have our election of our Board of Trustees officers. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we elect you as the, the chair of the board for the next school year, so you'll be serving your second year in the job. I have a motion by Ms. Baltonite that I remain Chairman of the board for the following year. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Derrick. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to um, recommend that we uh, keep Ms. Cheryl Burgess in her position as vice chair. I'd like to make that motion. I have a motion by Ms. Carey that Ms. Cheryl Burgess will remain in the position of vice chair for the following year. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Derrick, any discussion? Hearing no, none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to um, have Francis Faulkner remain as board secretary for a second term. Second I term. have a motion by Ms. Derrick that we elect Ms. Baltonite as our secretary for the following year. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Carey, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Next is section two, our consent items. And first up is Miss Angela Roden with our financial report. Merry Christmas, good evening. Um, tonight Christmas. we are looking at our November 30th um, balances on our cash balance analysis. Uh, worth pointing out is that we're still continuing to spend our ESER two money and that's what we're using for the HVAC at the middle, uh, the elementary school. Middle. Which one we do first? The middle first. So um, that's what we're claiming for that. And we've also bought some screens also. We pay for those as well. Uh, are there any specific questions on the revenues and expenditures? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Roden. Next is section 2.2, our superintendent's report, Dr. Atkinson. Thank you, uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, would you please stand up? 
I know some of you already heard, but we just want to celebrate Dr. Air Roberts, who was just recently named the 2021-22 South Carolina Assistant Principal of the Year. And we're just so proud of you. Not only was she selected as the Assistant Principal of the Year, but she was also selected to compete at the national level. So even among all the other selected, she was selected as the the top, the one that we're putting all our money on and all our hopes that you're going to be the national assistant principal here. No, no pressure, no pressure at all, but we just want to celebrate and, and recognize you. And, you know, this is three years in a row that we've had someone in the audience selected uh, as a, some sort of administrator of the year, whether it be principal, administrator, assistant principal. So no, no pressure on the rest of you, but uh, we have a three year streak. So just thank you and, and congratulations. Uh, recently, our middle school beta club uh, received the National Beta School of Merit status. Uh, and this was because of their dedication to academic excellence and also their, uh, their, uh, their dedication and celebration of, of all academic achievements for, for their students. So we're proud of our, of our middle school beta club. Uh, over the past two weeks, we have been fortunate to be able to celebrate and be able to have con uh, concerts and band performances and uh, course concerts at our Fine Arts Center. So we're returning to a sense of normalcy and we just were so excited to be able to celebrate these events that were, that were really wonderful and be able to celebrate those with, with our, our families. Uh, last week was Computer Science Week and throughout the state uh, we, we celebrate this with something called an hour of code and this was focused on not only programming but problem solving uh, logic and creativity and so we had uh, some sort of uh, celebration or event at each of our schools to be able to, to uh, host our hour of code there have been many many special events uh, over the course of the last two years but today I've got to witness one of the most special if you were at the primary school today and could watch almost 600 students receive a free pair of shoes and socks and just see the gleam in their eye and the smile on their face and uh, running around and testing just to see how fast they could go in these new shoes and uh, showing off those that would blink with the had lights. But it was, it was a special day and we just are so grateful for, for the, the group Soul Stepping, which is a, a Lexington County based uh, nonprofit that you know their their sole purpose is to be able to provide these shoes for our students uh, I had a difficult time trying to count how many volunteers were there today because they were moving so quickly but my best estimate there were about 30 uh, residents of Lexington County there helping our students uh, try on their new shoes and, and take those home so it was it was quite an experience uh, as far as COVID uh, how that is trending again it continues to improve uh, as you know, the, the country has seen an uptick. We've been holding steady or even decreasing. So um, last week we had a positive staff member, which was the first time in five weeks. So again, we're holding, you know, if you average that out, that's still pretty close to zero uh, per week. Um, we had three staff members that have been quarantined over the course of the whole last six weeks. So in the last six weeks, we've only had three staff members that have to be quarantined. Again, you're looking at less than one per week. Uh, we have had a few students test positive in the last six weeks. That's six, that's one per week, which is 0.1%, which is the lowest for the entire year over that time period. And we've had uh, 21 students quarantined, so again, which uh, is the low point for this whole year. So we're still uh, doing very, very well in terms of COVID. Uh, we did not really see a significant increase uh, due to the Thanksgiving holidays and we have passed that that 15 day mark where we should have seen that if it was going to occur because of because of Thanksgiving. So we've been really fortunate uh, for our, our battle with COVID for, for the for this year. And that that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Next is section three, our public participation. Do we have any cards? No cards. Next is section four, our information items. Uh, first up is Ms. Roden with our annual audit report overview. Tonight we are here to say goodbye officially to 2021 and Gabrielle Davis with McGregor and Company is here to go over our uh, audit that ended June 30th, 
2021. Um, I printed out the pages that she's going to reference there in a paper clip so you don't have to flip through your bound copy. So you can reference those as she goes through. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Atkins. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, as Angela said, I'm Gabrielle Davis from McGregor & Company, and we perform the audit services for fiscal year June 30, 2021. And I'm going to briefly go over um, some items with you um, that Angela has ready for you in front of you. Um, first, the most important thing, um, the opinion on the financial statements. Um, in our opinion, the financial statements were fairly presented in all material respects in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. That just means it's an unmodified opinion. There were no qualifications for any items that we noted or would be required to be reported as a modified opinion, an adverse opinion, or any of those items. On page 14, this page demonstrates by <clears throat> the assets and liabilities, basically your balance sheet of all major funds that you have, the general fund, special revenue, e EIA, debt service, capital projects. Um, for the year, your total assets were 23.6 million. You had total liabilities of 9.6 million and a total fund balance of 13.3 million and that's across all funds. If you flip to page 16, this is your statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balances as of June 30, 2021. So this reflects just the activity from that fiscal year, July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021. Um, you had total revenues of 32.6 million, total expenditures of 32.5 million. Um, you had a total increase in your fund balance of 317,000. Um, for general funds specifically the fund balance at the end of the year was 13.4 million um, and this is the balance um, used to meet the requirements from the south carolina department of education as well as the budgets that you approve um, fiscal practices and budgetary conditions per the south carolina department of education requires you to have one month of operating expenditures in fund balance in the general fund that one month would have required you to have 1.9 million. You exceeded that by 11.5 million. Internally, as a district policy um, and a, this board, you were required to have three months of fund balance maintained at the end of the year. That would have been 5.7 million, and you'll exceeded that by 7.7 million. Um, speaking again to some of the requirements by the Department of Education, they do a risk um, analysis every year. Um, based on your prior year audit. So they would have done the risk analysis in April of 2021 based on your fiscal year 2020 audit and you received a score of 10, which is a low risk auditee identification. Um, anything below 18 is considered low risk. So they didn't see anything financially based on your prior year audit that would indicate you have a higher risk or a higher um, level of risk with any particular area based on their criteria that they evaluate you by. Um, again, keep in mind this is just a snapshot in time as of June 30, 2021. I'm going to flip over to page 18 and discuss your business type activity, which is your food service fund, which is not was not included in those first two pages. Um, as far as food service goes, you have 794,000 in assets with 2.1 million in liabilities. Um, just to be clear though, 2.1 million of that, mostly all of that, but about 80,000, is related specifically to the allocation of OPEB and pension liabilities associated with the South Carolina retirement system. The health insurance trust fund and any long-term disability trust fund that everyone participates in as employees of your district. That creates a net position or <clears throat> the same as a fund balance of one, a negative 1.1 million. And again, most of that is related to the 2 million. If that was not reported here, there would be a positive fund balance there. Um, 
salaries. Also keep in mind that your salaries are charged here, but the general fund pays for all the benefits of every employee for your food service department. For the year on page 19, you'll see that there was a change in net position, which decreased by 184,000. Most of this is due to COVID. Um, the food service program, as I'm sure you're aware, every child eats for free. Um, so y'all took a little bit of a hit. I do know that there's funding that was delivered in August to help with some of that from the state. Um, and I'm sure they're working on some other ways to get additional funding to make up for those differences in what you received. I'm going to flip over to page 87 and 88. 87 and 88 are the schedules of expenditures of federal awards. These are every federal dollar that you receive during 2021, broken down by each category. Um, the major program that was selected was food service because you had over a million dollars in that particular program by itself. Um, you'll see your special education funding, the Title I funding. Um, you'll also notice COVID funding. Um, the COVID funding is on page 88. You received or actually spent $380,000 of those funds, although that is only a small fraction of the funds you've actually are allocated by the Department of Education. Um, in fiscal year 2022, the one we're currently in, there's going to be a significant amount of expenditures related to those funds. And I just want to point out that they're most likely going to be a major program because they, the federal government has deemed them to be high risk. Um, the total federal awards that were expended during fiscal year 2021 was 3.3 million. If you flip over to page 94, this is a summary of the type of audit reports issued. If there were any findings to report, all of that can be found on this summary page. As I talked about earlier, the financial statement, the auditor's report on the financial statements was unmodified, which just means it was a clean opinion. Um, we did not identify any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies or any non-compliance that was material to the financial statements. For federal awards specifically, we <clears throat> issued an unmodified opinion as well. So that was also a clean opinion. And we did not note any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies related to those federal funds. Um, as I mentioned before, the child nutrition cluster was the major program. The threshold to determine major programs is 750,000. So you must expend at least 750,000 for those to be considered a type A program to be evaluated for selection under audit. Um, as I discussed earlier as well, you qualify as a low risk auditee and there were no other findings for non-compliance um, related to grants, federal or state laws and legal compliance that we identified. That's all I have, unless someone has any specific questions. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate um, the district office welcoming us in. You know, it's kind of different. Um, and all the hard work that Angela, the finance department, um, everyone in the food service program that got us everything we needed to perform our audit and get it done timely and to the State Department in advance of the deadline. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next is section 4.2, our instructional highlights. Ms. Shara Clark. We are always glad to have everyone to our school. And I first of all want to begin with just a few pieces of information. Everyone's heard the old saying, teamwork makes the dream work. And I have to give a huge shout out to Roy Frick, assistant principal this year at the middle school. Uh, for the first five months now, he has been 
running, skating, whizzing through the halls, staying on top of things. And we all know this year has given us lots of challenges to work on. So that is a huge, what you're about to see is a huge reflection of his work. Miss Ellis, who is one of our district learning, digital learning coaches, she is stationed here at our school and she's a huge part of our team as well. And so you'll see um, her magical work with technology here and hopefully all of the the sound will work we have focused not just this year but the last few years on personalized learning and we all feel that this is what is best for students and helping our students grow the last couple of years have given us a huge challenge in so many ways but i want to give a little highlight and shout out to our kids and our families first of all i'm going to begin with this with the teachers one of our goals over the last couple of years is to really extend our communication with our families and we document that that is a requirement um, because we need that to reflect on each and every year and so far I just counted right before the meeting tonight because some people were updating other teachers were inputting into the spreadsheet we have had 2,104 contacts to families by teachers this year in these first few months um, that is almost 4.5 contacts per student enrolled in the school since the beginning of school. We just finished our MAP testing, which y'all know is that kind of check-in point to see how kids are progressing throughout the year. We see this as a sign of good growth, having all of our kids back in the building all the time. 59% of the entire school met their growth goal. That's not set by us, that's set by the national company NWEA, so they're kind of uh, I would say very high expectations, but we were excited that many students in school met that. Their growth goal is all different. So I had to recalculate to see who actually grew at all. That was 74% of our school grew from August until now. That was all for math. For reading, we had 58% of the school meet their growth goal, and overall 67% grew. We just finished up 31 makeup tests yesterday, Mr. Frick did, and about 40 something today. So we haven't been able to calculate those in. Um, the kids are what are the most exciting to watch because we want to build that culture of, they have to have ownership in what they do. And hopefully on this video, you'll see a little bit of that, of that reflected in their conversations. But just to hear the, the hallway conversation that we've heard over these last couple of weeks has been inspiring and amazing so um, if you've ever spent a little time in middle school or you remember when your children were that is huge that is huge so we're excited to share a little bit about what we've done a journey through our halls this year <laughs> Part 
while their neighbor, who may be playing the same instrument as they are, or even a different instrument, um, you know, the person sitting next to them, they end up then, you know, having to understand, I have to be right, and this person has to be right, and the two things mix together. And I guess the neat part about all of that is that they start this early in their career, uh, typically sixth grade. By the time they're in eighth grade, they really have a true understanding because then by that instance, we're now talking about, you know, literally kids that are sitting side by side. And we'll take trumpet, for instance. A trumpet player might be playing the first trumpet part where his, his or her neighbor is playing the second trumpet part. Literally two different things going on at the same time. And so being able to give them the responsibility of learning their part, knowing that they can do that, knowing that they can do that with everybody else, um, ends up being a real, a real joy for them once they're capable of doing it, and especially for those of us that get to experience the life points. And then on top of it, you take that all the way to the high school group, and you literally go back to the state championship that was one of the high school uh, for, uh, performance this year. Those kids, were in the state, but literally 27 students were, where there were instances where all 27 students were individually responsible for many different things happening throughout, throughout that performance. To me, personalized learning helps me grow more because whenever I'm ready to move on to a new subject and other people are still practicing on it, I can go ahead and use that new material and learn more. Personalized learning here makes me is great. Frankly, it looks sometimes like organized chaos. I might have about 22 kids and 12 might be doing one thing, 10 might be doing something else, or groups can be as small as two or three doing each activity. Students are striving to meet their full potential through engrossing themselves in tasks that meet them at the level at which they are currently at. So, to an outsider coming in, they may not see an industrialized classroom with teachers standing in front of them and giving instructions. I've actually taken that out of my room and put all my direct instruction primarily on video so students can access them repeatedly or even from home if they had to be now. Or they can go back to hit mastery on a certain topic. The Lunch and Learn program has helped me get communication skills with people and help me stay out of a lot of trouble. It was hard to decide who to include because we could almost ask any student in the hallway and you would hear pretty much the same conversations. And so we wanted to share that although the journey has not been smooth and bumpy and like Mr. Green said, sometimes it's organized chaos, we all, see, we all are seeing such growth. It is impressive to me, continually impresses me, to see students at this age without giving the prompt those were their voices. You heard exactly what what they thought. And I think that is the really the epitome of where we want our, our middle schoolers to go. That shows leadership and that's a definite need. And it also impresses me that they have really put thought into what they want to get out of their learning. And so that's where we're hoping we shift in the future. And we this is just the beginning and we hope it continues and gets even better from here on out. Any questions? 
Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Next is our Section 5.0, our action items, and Mr. Smith is up first. Good evening. Uh, tonight we're here to seek a second reading approval for the Administrative Rule DJ purchasing. And if you recall uh, from the first reading, uh, it's just the uh, section marked um, 2 104 small purchases. So it's just two pages in that 130 ish uh, pages. And really what it does is it gives us flexibility in making those small purchases. Uh, as you can see from the from the bullets on the numbers, I won't go over those since we did that last time. Uh, and just remember, this is in accordance with the South Carolina procurement model, which was amended in uh, September of this year. Uh, and no changes have been made since first reading approval. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we give second reading approval to policy ADAR-DJ purchasing. I have a motion by Ms. Carey that we give second reading approval of policy DJ and administrative rule DJ-R as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Baltnight. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I think Ms. Rye is next. Well, good evening. I'll echo Ms. Roden's Merry Christmas and hope all of you enjoy some time with your families, as I'm sure all of us are looking forward to it as well. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to bring some instructional policies to you that either need to be put in place or need to be updated. These are all at the recommendation of the South Carolina School Boards Association. And Mr. Chair, if it's okay with you, I'll go over all of them, unless you'd like to break them down separately That's fine by with motion. Me, unless someone has an objection. Okay. Nope. Um, <clears throat> you had some descriptions in your packet, but I will hit the highlights for you. The first policy is policy IHAC, Social Studies Education, and that is a new policy for our school district. Um, it has been in existence under the School Boards Association for some time. We just did not have it. Uh, most of what is in this policy we were already practicing, so this really just brings us into alignment with what our teachers were already doing. Specifically, there are some laws that require instruction of the Constitution on September 17th every year and of course Veterans Day and fortunately for us we are always in school on Veterans Day or right thereafter if it falls on the weekend but our teachers do provide instruction in grades K through 12 on those things and then also within this policy it's not in the policy itself but part of that uh, law provides that we provide the civics exam and we've been doing that since the school year 2016-17 which is when that law went into place as well so this policy will bring us up to date and align with what is taking place in our classrooms the second policy is an administrative rule actually and mr kaufman probably cringes when he sees this one in the packet because some of you know we've updated this one several times but it gets updated pretty frequently when there's a change at the state level. We have to come back and review our graduation requirements. And so in this one specifically, um, there are some highlights and there, it's not necessarily new information, but we changed the language so that it would reflect the model policy. But this does include an update that aligns with the social studies policy so that we are um, making sure that the instruction is being provided as well as a classroom examination within the required course of U.S. history, which is a requirement for graduation. We are already doing that, but this just brings our policy in alignment with that. Also, all of our students since 2016-17 have to take a U.S. citizenship um, test as part of their um, U.S. government course. We have also been doing that. They don't take the entire exam. Some of you may know that's a 100 question exam. What the policy from the state department requires is that they take a 10 question exam and the teacher chooses those uh, questions and provides that to the students. Uh, also, we changed the language. This just reflects, this is not new, but it's a change in language to the model policy about having an end of course examination in a high school course, credit course in science as well as changing the language to uh, reflect the 
um, credit that a student would receive, that the student must be enrolled for a minimum of one semester immediately preceding his or her graduation, except in a change of residence. Going on in that same policy, there is a change to transfer credits for adult education. Uh, a student may transfer credit earned in adult education program to count towards the units required for the high school diploma. Uh, for each unit being transferred, the student has spent a minimum of 120 hours in class time in that subject at that level and that the teacher was proper, properly certified to teach the course. Basically, if they want a high school diploma as opposed to a GED, they have to have the same requirements that a high school student would have as well. The next policy is also an administrative rule for IKAR grading and assessment systems. We've frequently revised this one as well, most recently in August 2019. And the language in this one that we are changing, that was outlined for you, is that there was a language change about um, the right to evaluate evidence, that the district has the right to evaluate evidence provided by a parent when a student is transferring in, and that we have to, not may, the policy previously said may use the South Carolina Honors Framework criteria to evaluate evidence for honors waiting. Now the language says must. So that's a change and requirement from the state level as well. Those are the two major changes there. And then in investigating all of those changes, I went back and looked at our homeschooling policy since we're talking about the potential of children bringing transfer credit in if they've been homeschooled. And our homeschool policy had not been updated since January of 1999. And it did not reflect all of the language in the model policy. So there are two sections at the end of the policy that have been adding added one is reporting which this occurs and this is just an alignment to what already takes place it just was not in our policy and that is that homeschool associations have to report to the district who they're serving and then the section entitled students returning to public school now reflects some of the same language that aligns to the grading and graduation requirements policy that we do have a team the administrative team within each school that will review those transcripts and determine the eligibility for the credit and or placement if the student is in grades one through eight. And then the last one is also an administrative rule and it is JLDBBR, Suicide Prevention, Intervention and Postvention. And this was actually brought to you in December of 2018 as a new policy at that time. And the recommendation is a change in language uh, simply to include uh, the addition of student identification cards. This was in the law that was passed back in the spring session of the legislation, legislative session that we would provide students in middle and high school an identification card with information about suicide prevention and the suicide hotline number. And because we don't do ID cards at the middle and high school, what we did instead was we did print those on the old cards that we had and we provided them to all of those students. So we're in alignment with the policy. Uh, you were given the prov provision that if you don't use ID cards on a regular basis day to day that you still had to provide the information to the students. So adding that language in our policy allows us to be in alignment with the law now. So Mr. Chair, it is our recommendation that those said policies be brought forward for our first reading. Are there any questions? I have a question, but it's not so much about the language of the policy. It's um, the chart that gives the um, grading conversions, mostly to the high school students, but it was started in eighth grade. Where is it available to them? Do they use agendas even anymore? Do they have it published where they have ready? It's in the course catalog that it's, that's not necessarily printed and given to students, but it's posted online. And if somebody needed a copy of it, we could certainly get them. But the chart itself is in their course catalog for the high school. Do the kids have a copy of that readily accessible? 
Do the kids get a copy of that course? We don't print copies of that, but it, they have it when they go when they go into their individual IGP meetings. Mm -hmm. It's part of what they discuss. That was one thing I found out in IGP meetings is that when we, and when we were in a classroom at the high school level, I, I put this on the overhead up there, and they're going, "Well, I didn't know that if I made a, a grade in the college prep course, it weighted as this, but if I, you know, they didn't they didn't know." So I was just checking to make sure that there's some way they have ready access it well I can only speak from my personal experience just having had a child who had an IGP mm -hmm. they do go over it they in do. the IGP was, meeting did, with them <laughs> um, so they I do talk them. about that and I, I am aware that they do know that there are weighted courses mm -hmm. um, we don't print them just because it's a pretty lengthy document I was just thinking about this scale just the scale itself mm -hmm. the scale itself and but did they use agendas at the high school mm -hmm. I don't think y'all print agenda it's also no, posted I mean pretty much everything is posted digital because digital kids don't really do printed materials like we do mm -hmm. okay. I just wanted to make sure they had access to yes it. they did Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we grant first reading approval of policy IHAC, Social Studies Education, policy IKF and ARIKF-R, graduation requirements, IKA, ARIKA-R, grading assessment systems, IHBG and ARIHBG-R, homeschooling, and JLDBB, ARJLDBB-R, suicide prevention, intervention, and postvention as presented by the administration. I have a motion by Dr. Gunner that we give first reading approval of policies IA, I'm sorry, IHAC, Social Studies Education, IKF and ARIKF-R, graduation requirements, IKA and ARIKA-R, grading assessment systems, IHBG and administrative rule IHBGR, homeschooling, and finally, policy JLDBB and administrative rule JLDBB-R, suicide prevention, intervention, and postvention. Do I have a second? <laughs> second by Ms. Derrick, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Rye. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, go into executive session for discussion of student appeals and employment matters. I have a motion that we move into executive session to uh, discuss student appeals and discussion of employment matters. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Ms. Baltmaid. Any discussion? I'll take this moment to wish everyone here on behalf of the board a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, because most of you probably won't be out here when we return. So uh, <laughs> anyway, Merry Christmas and uh, to all your families and, and ho, ho, ho. <laughs> all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. We are in executive session. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.